Good afternoon, guys. So today we're going to be going through this question, which was on the working grade assessment, which is about connected particles over a pulley, um, specifically one that's on a vertical plane and one that's on a rough horizontal surface. So we have two small balls, P and Q, with three kilograms and two kilograms respectively. The balls are attached to the end of the string. P is held on rest at rest on this horizontal surface, rough horizontal surface. The string passes over a pulley, which is fixed at the edge of the surface, and Q hangs vertically down. Now, it is also two meters above the ground, and that's going to be useful for part C when it's got some other things involved. But to start, we're just going to go through this. The system is initially held at rest with a string taut. Horizontal mag force of magnitude 40 newtons acts on P in this way, shown. P is released and moves directly away from the pulley. Now that information tells us that the acceleration is going to be the left here and up for the Q. Now that's very important when we're setting up our initial equations. It is given that P does not leave the horizontal surface and that Q does not reach the pulley. That just helps us mean that there's no limitations of it um, of the model in that direction. The balls are modeled as particles, so we don't have to worry about them having any size or any issues there. And the pulley is modeled as being smooth and small. Now that's very useful. So it's the fact that it's not going to have any effect on the distance traveled and it's not going to have an additional drag coefficient. Um, and the string is modeled as being light and inextensible. And that's really important because being light means we've got no mass of the string, which means as it moves, we don't have to worry about mass transferring from a force vector on Q to a horizontal part. And it's inextensible, which means acceleration and tension will be the same for both of these at all times. So all of those are things that we'll need to consider if we are improving our model, um, but that is what we're doing now. So I show that the magnitude of acceleration of each particle is 2.48. There's a reason that tells you the value here. By telling you the value here, it allows you to do all the other questions here, B, C, and D, so that you can still acquire 14 marks if you don't know how to show the acceleration is that. But let's actually just negate that. We're gonna pretend it doesn't tell us that information. Okay, so if we pretend it doesn't give us that information, we should get the acceleration of this. So one thing we'll notice is actually there's something missing. It's the fact that since this is a rough horizontal surface, that a constant frictional force of 8, eight newtons opposes the motion of P. So if we go to our diagram here, you'll notice that we have almost all of the forces except for the ones that oppose the motion. So we've actually got an extra we have one force along the street here, which will be our tension, and we'll have a frictional force of 8 newtons. This is extremely important, so whenever you're doing these questions, you have to model all forces, otherwise you won't get it right. And with Q, there's no other frictional forces. All we have is we have tension going up, and down we'll have gravity, which is just 2G. So with that in now, we can actually start modeling these two as simultaneous equations. So if we look at P, I'm going to write P, it's going to be, so our acceleration is in this direction, so it's going to be 40, so this is just F equals MA. So we've got the forces, all forces, we've got 40 in the positive direction, in the negative direction, so we'll have minus T minus 8 is equal to, because they are opposing the, for, um, the acceleration, the mass, which is 3 times the acceleration. That's our first one there. We can actually make that a bit nicer because we can do 40 minus 8. So we have 32 minus T equals 3A. So that's our first equation for the particle P. Now, particle Q is a lot easier. So particle Q is just forces we have. Now, remember, since it is opposing the pulley, this means it should be going towards the pulley. So acceleration will be up. So we're going to mean that the T is going to be positive. So it'll be T minus, and the weight is opposing it, going down 2G, which is equal to 2, which is our mass acceleration. We now have our two forces, uh, two simultaneous equations for the uh, forces given. Okay, well, if you notice, we've got simultaneous equations. We have opposing values of T, one's positive, one's negative. So if we add them together, so if we do P plus Q, okay, we're going to get, so you're going to have 32, these are going to cancel, 
minus 2g. So we have 32 minus 2g is equal to 3a plus 2a is 5a, which means a is equal to all of this divided by 5. And since 2g is just 19.6, uh, I'm going to leave it as 2g and use my calculator. The 5, top that into a calculator, and you get an acceleration of 2.48 meters per second squared. Okay, so it's not too much of a question. Just make sure at the start, this is five marks here, make sure at the start that you actually make sure you include all resistances given, all forces given, and then you can form your two equations. And you can use a number of different methods to find it out. Um, you can change it in substitution, but this is nice and simple because we can add them together and they're going to cancel each other out. They will almost always do that in some way or the other because you'll always have T going one way with it, uh, going one way with acceleration, one way opposing. So it's really nice and useful. So we've just shown that acceleration is 2.48 meters per second squared. Now we need to find the tension in the string. We can use either of these equations if you notice. Q has that one there, so it's a little bit nicer. So we've got T minus 2G is equal to 2A. Therefore, T is equal to 2A plus 2G. And we can substitute our values in. So two, this is going to be 2 times 2.48 plus 2 times G, which is just 9.8, okay, which equals 24. 0.56 newtons. Okay, it's a force, and that would be it there. Okay, it's not hard. That's why it's only two marks. It's just substituting in one to the given formulas that you have. If you have made an error in one of your calculations here, make sure all you're doing is you're using one of your formulas, substituting your this value of a into it, which means you would get a, a method mark for at least so you get at least one mark for doing the right thing here. Matters on the question, but usually you lose a mark for your um, for your accuracy. All right, so that's it. Seven marks, very very easy. Let's look now. This is the next part of the question, and this is where a lot of the marks will come from. So this is where it gets a bit trickier. So when the balls have been in motion for zero point five seconds, the string breaks. So when the string breaks. That means we're going to have no more force pulling it up. So the only force that will remain, there'll be no more tension. The only force that will be raining is gravity. Okay. Find the additional time. So we need to find a time. If you ever need to find a time or a distance, you're starting to think of SUVAC. Okay. So let's think of it like this. I'm going to try and fill out SUVAC. So I want to find the additional time. So what is the distance? Well, if we really think about this, this is actually going to move up some time. So we don't know what the distance is that we'll need to find. So we first need to find what's this new distance? How much has it traveled in 0 0.5 seconds? Also, if this has started accelerating upwards, we also need to find out, this will be one, we also need to find out our initial velocity because it's going to have a velocity going up. So we'll need to find initial velocity as well. What's our final velocity? We don't care. You'll notice that the next question here has it. What's our acceleration? Well, this is when the string is broken. So the only acceleration will be gravity. So it'll be going down. Okay, so it'll be negative 9.8. And what's our time? Well, that's what we want to find out. So we can't do any of this because we don't need an initial distance. We don't need to, we don't know what our distance is. So let's first start find out how much it's moved in 0 0.5 seconds. So I'll do that down here. So how much has it moved in 0 0.5 seconds? Well, we've got, um, so we could just use S is equal to UT plus half a T squared. So our initial, so this is just for the first 0 0.5 seconds. So that's going to be, it starts at zero because it starts at rest. So it's just going to be half times our acceleration was 2.48 and our time elapsed is 0.5 squared. Cut that into a calculator. We have 0.31 meters. So in the first 0.5 seconds, it has traveled 0.31 meters. So that means 
0 0.31. It is now 2.31 meters above the ground. Okay, now that's actually really useful. So now with that information, we know, so if we were considering that it's now 2.31 meters above the ground, we want to know when it has fallen. So when it, if this is our starting position, that's why it talks about additional time. SUVA only works if you start, if everything starts at this time. Okay, so we're going to consider um, time is equal to zero at this point that it breaks. So we want to find out when it has fallen 2.31 meters. So it is 2.31 meters below its starting point. So negative 2.31 meters. We still need to find out what's that above velocity it is going to be. Let's have a look. So we've got, let's do this here. So what's its velocity going to be? All right. So that's actually not too bad. We could just use V equals U plus AT. So that's just going to be, it starts at rest. So it's just 2.48 times 0 0.5. So its initial velocity is going to be 1.24 meters per second. Okay. So also nice and easy. What's its initial velocity here? Um, so what's its velocity after 0 0.5 seconds when it breaks? It's going to be going up, so it's positive 1.24 meters per second. Okay. We now have three pieces of information to find the fourth. We now have enough information to use our SUVAT laws. So we're just going to use S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. We want to find the t, so we substitute everything else here. So we've got negative 2.31 for our um, displacement. We have ut, which is 1.24, because that's our original velocity going up. And it's going to be half of 9.8, so it's negative 4.9 t squared. Now, as you'll notice, this is a quadratic. We're going to get two times. We're going to get the time if we consider this as where it will be a negative, so beforehand and afterwards. Rearrange this to make it equal to zero. I'm going to put it all to the other side, so I get a positive value of t squared. So you have 4.9 t squared. Take 1.24 t minus 2.31. Okay, so I just took those away from so they end up on the other side, and we have a quadratic. Use a quadratic solver. Okay, a quadratic solver tells us that time will be equal to 0 0.8246 or t is equal to negative 0 0.57. Well, definitely not that, because we're talking about how many additional seconds it's going to be. So therefore, this would be your value in seconds here. That would be your own. So it, last but not least, find the additional time. It is an additional 0 0.8246 seconds until q hits the ground. Now, got the rest of this here. This rest, once we've got this, it's really easy. So find the speed of Q uh, as it hits the floor. Well, we know that at its initial speed, okay, we know it's time from that and we know it's acceleration. So that's actually really easy. So if we were to, just to find out this, we now know that this is 0 0.8246. So all we need to do is find out our velocity. Really easy. We could just use V equals U plus A. T, which is going to be 1.24, take 9.8 times 0 0.8246, which is, type that into your calculator, you get negative 6.84. Therefore, it's going to be going 6.84 meters per second. Of course, it's negative. It's going down. Okay, so... Right now, I've just that's four, that's sixteen mark, fourteen marks, fourteen marks just in this question. So the biggest part of this question alone at this point is you have to consider we have to consider this original four, 0 0.5 seconds to think about it's going to have a new displacement above the ground and it's going to have a new initial velocity. Those two are really important. You have to include this information. Okay, all right, that one and that one now. Our last question isn't 